Hey, it's Darius Clark from I-75 CPA Review. And if you're taking the CPA exam in January of 2022 or later, you're going to want to know about these changes to audit. So what's the big deal? In January of 2022, the CPA audit exam will begin testing the new audit report for the non-issuer. The big difference is the opinion section is first. The basis for opinion section is second. And the reason for the change was to bring the non-issuer audit report to resemble the audit report for the issuer. Now both the issuer and non-issuer audit reports have to begin with the opinion section and then the basis for opinion section. So here's what the report looks like. The title, Independent Auditor's Report. Notice it doesn't have the word registered in it because then it would be the audit report for an issuer. The appropriate addressee would likely be the board of directors, possibly an audit committee, if the non-issuer has an audit committee. Remember, this is the audit report for the non-issuer, the new report that they're starting to test, January of 2022. Here's the deal. Opinion section is first. In our opinion, see it? The accompanying financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of the company. Above that is a paragraph that is basically introduces what we've done. We've audited the financial statements, which comprise the balance sheet, the related statements of income, changes in stockholders, equity, and cash flows. These two paragraphs make up what's called the opinion section of the audit report for the non-issuer. And you've got to know that that opinion section is first. Each section of the new report has to have a label. Notice the label here for the first section is opinion. That's the label that shows the first section. What about the second section? The label must be basis for opinion. So the second section after the opinion has to be basis for opinion. And it's going to say something like this. We conducted our audits in accordance with auditing standards. Our responsibilities are further described in a different section known as auditor's responsibilities section. So we're not going to get into what our responsibilities are here in the basis for opinion section other than to say that we're required to be independent and to meet our ethical responsibilities in accordance with ethical requirements relating to audits. And then very important, we believe that the audit evidence we've obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion. And that's in the basis for opinion section, which has to be the second section of the new audit report for the non-issuer. Now, after the two sections, and you might be wondering, okay, what comes next? What's the third section? What's the fourth section? Believe it or not, it doesn't matter the order of the new report beyond what has to be in the first section and the second section. Yes, there has to be a responsibilities of management section, but that section does not have to be third. It just can't be first or second. Yes, there is going to be an auditor's responsibilities section for the audit of the financial statements, but that section doesn't have to be fourth, as long as it's not what? First or second. So the four required sections of the new report must have a label. The opinion section, basis for opinion section, responsibilities of management for the financial statements, auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. Now, you may or may not have a section on key audit matters. So in your audit report for the non-issuer, the auditor is not obligated to report on key audit matters. This is something brand new. This idea that the auditor could include a section on key audit matters in the report. But in order to do so, the auditor would have to have been previously engaged to report on the key audit matters. So it's not automatic that the reader is gonna see a section on key audit matters in the audit report of a non-issuer. It would only appear if the auditor was engaged as part of the audit to report on key audit matters. And if not engaged to report on these key audit matters, then these matters would just be reported in a private communication to governance or to management, but wouldn't be included in the audit report. If there is a section on key audit matters, it would require the label, key audit matters, and then it would say something like this, key audit matters are those matters that were communicated with those charged with governance. And in our professional judgment, were of most significance in our audit of the financial statements of the current period. And then what you would have is a description of each key audit matter. 
but only if the auditor was engaged to report on key audit matters. Otherwise, this section would not even appear in the audit report for the non-issuer. Notice that the key audit matters section would likely be the third section, just after the basis for opinion section, which has to be second, which follows the opinion section, which has to be first. But does the key audit matters section have to be third? No, the key audit matters section doesn't have to be third. It just can't be first or second. Let's see if we can answer this multiple choice question. What would be an acceptable ordering of sections of the audit report when the auditor is engaged to report on key audit matters for a non-issuer? And I expect they're going to ask you something like this starting in January of 2022, because now the opinion section has to be first and the basis for opinion section has to be second. And after that, it really doesn't matter. So which choice says opinion first, basis for opinion second, only letter B? Letter B would be the correct answer because opinion has to be first, basis for opinion second, and after that, it really doesn't matter, does it? And I basically took this question right out of the I-75 test bank, which is fully updated for January 2022. And on the exam, the question will probably include the facts according to SAS 134, because that is the new standard that brought about this change in the audit report for the non-issuer. So look for the question to include SAS 134. That's how you'll know they're asking you about the new audit report for the non-issuer. Now we'll go on to things like emphasis of matter, other matters. Let's see how they're handled in the new audit report. If you're struggling to pass the CPA audit exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com. Get yourself on I-75 where the right teacher makes all the difference course is fully updated for January of 2022.